Hey folks, my name is Tom Vassell. Normally this channel I use to review board games and play lots of games and that's fun. But I wanted to talk to you today about building a box maze. Now building a box maze, the reason I'm talking about it is because really there seems to be a dearth of information on the internet for this. When I was a kid, someone built a box maze at my church one time. They went down in the basement of the church and built a box maze, and it's something that stuck with me the rest of my life. It was incredibly fun. And so I've done it now at each school that I've taught at. I've done it. I've done it six times now, and uh, I've built these mazes and had a lot of fun with them. I like cornfield mazes. I like different things like that, but this is something that I can put together indoors and, you know, it doesn't require me owning a field and cornrows and such. A box maze. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the box maze first. Here are some tips that I've learned as time has gone by, and you can follow them or not uh, as you go. But to build a box maze, first you have to figure out what you're going to do it for. It's usually best to do it as part of a bigger event. If you're if you're at a school that has some kind of, uh, I do it at my school's uh, fall festival, uh, but you could do it, you know, for some other fair. Usually those are the best things to do. You're going to need a fairly large room. I highly recommend doing them inside. I suppose you could do it outside, but then you have weather to take into account. But you need a big room, and it's good that that room will have uh, a way to get in and a way to get out. Uh, I do it in a room. Uh, I build in about 75% of the room, which lets me walk around the maze on the outside. Uh, here you can see some video of my finish box maze this year. It's not a pretty sight to look at uh, from the outside, but that doesn't really matter because it's what's inside the box maze that, that counts. Now this doesn't look that big, but because I have it winding and twisting all around inside, it's much longer. And at the end of this video, uh, my daughter Melody is going to crawl through the box maze and show you what it looks like to crawl through it. Now, one of the things about a box maze is this, is that the name itself is really not true. I don't actually build a box maze. Occasionally, I'll put a few small dead ends in them, but for the most part, it's just a box tunnel. You start at the beginning and you get out at the end. Now, this is a really important thing to talk about because you say, oh, that's so fun. It really is. For kids to go through this, it's incredibly fun. Having kids get lost in there where you have to go in and rescue them because they get stuck in a corner and they scream and cry is not fun for anybody involved. Usually the way that you structure these, you want people to go in and you want them to come out. And so that can be, you know, you have to figure out how to keep the traffic flow moving and the best way to do that is a tunnel. And while you might think a tunnel's boring, every time I do this, I have kids go through it 10, 15, 20 times and they just seem to get a kick out of that. Now, let's talk facts. Box maze, what do you need first? You need boxes. This is a nice size box, right? Great size box, worthless. This is the hardest part for me in doing a box maze. By far, the hardest thing of all is getting the boxes. But you can, you'll ask people to help you and people will be helpful to say, oh, I know where you can get boxes. You can get them at Walmart or, or Target or your local grocery store. And, and they'll have, you know, that's, you don't need those boxes. There are several boxes that you need. You need refrigerator boxes, you need wash machines, uh, ovens, dishwashers, uh, love seats, lazy boy, um, sofas. Furniture and appliances, those are the boxes you need, unless you have some miraculous way to get huge industrial boxes. Now here's another thing. Getting these boxes is gonna be tricky because you go to, you go to Lowe's, you go to Home Depot, you go to furniture stores, you go to all these places and you ask for boxes and they will tell you that as soon as they open their things, they take these boxes and they crush them immediately. And every store, or they put them outside where the cardboard people show up immediately and grab them and they're gone. Now this can be problematic for you to try to collect boxes. Now another thing, a side note here is you're gonna need a place to store these boxes because you're not gonna be able to get them in one day. For me, I usually do it over a period of two weeks to a month, collecting these boxes and if you're gonna collect them, you need a big place to store them all. What I found is, in each instance that I built the maze successfully, is I have formed a relationship with a local furniture place. For me, Royal Furniture in Florida City, uh, they, they send furniture all over the keys and I've managed to talk to them and we have a thing and I talk about Royal Furniture at my maze and they save me all their boxes. They call me, they say we have a load, I go pick them up immediately. Now this requires some flexibility on my part, but I need to get those boxes right away. That's really the best way. Otherwise, you're gonna be going here and grabbing a box, grabbing here. When I go there, I can get 15 to 20 boxes at a time and that saves me a lot of work. The best boxes i found to work with by far are Lazy Boy. 
chair boxes. They're a perfect size. They're really tough and strong. They're great boxes. So that's boxes. What else do you need? You by far need a great knife. And you probably need one for each worker that you have. I'll talk about workers in a bit. But you need one that you're going to feel comfortable using a lot because you need, it needs to go in. You'll probably have to switch the blades often because you'll be cutting up the boxes as you attach them together. Another thing you need is tape. I've used multiple kinds of tape. Duct tape is great for the whole world in general, but not so great for a box maze. Gorilla tape is a little better, but packing tape works pretty well. Uh, I, I like packing tape for several reasons. One, it holds boxes together, it stays on, and two, it's cheaper, a lot cheaper than duct tape. Now, none of these compare though to this. I have a box here of Mr. McGroovy's box rivets. You can find them at mrmcgroovies.com. I found these on the internet and these are phenomenal. I will never build a box maze without them. They come in two sizes, short and long. Your best bet is to buy almost all long when you buy these. But these are basically little rivets that have ridged edges. And let's see if I can get closer to the camera so you can see a little bit about how they work. And these ridged edges, you turn them sideways and you can push them together like that. You hear them snapping and they won't come apart. So what you need is you need a drill and you're gonna go to the two boxes. You put them side by side, you drill through the box Make the hole in the box, and then you go on one side with one of these and another side, and you may need two people. I would have a kid go inside the maze. I would drill, being very careful, of course, to make sure the kid's nowhere near when we drill the hole through. Then the kid would poke one end out. I put them in, we push them together with our thumbs, and they snap in position, and these hold that maze together. These are phenomenal. This is, if there's one tip you're doing building a box maze, this is it right here. Okay, so those are the tools that I use to put the maze together. When you put the maze together, I will shoot for and put box together. Sometimes I'll use tables. Tables give it a little bit of structure. Those white tables that everybody has, those are great, especially with you can put you can tape directly to them and it doesn't ruin the table when it comes off. So I build a long tunnel, I have an entrance, I have an exit with boxes, we use these knives. Uh, for me, building one of these usually takes around 15 to 20 hours. So I, you go in at 24 hours before the box maze opens, I start, go home, go to bed, come back and that. Now, you can make the box maze more fun, of course, with decorations. Now, this depends on how scary you want the maze to be. I personally like it to be a little scary. And what I do with my box maze is, I'll say the last half hour I'm running it, I turn off all the lights. The kids have a big, uh, you know, big kick out of that. But I don't like making them too scary because I like to make it fun for even the little kids to go through. And you would be surprised, even though it's not scary, how many older teenagers will still crawl through. So I get an extension cord and you can put Christmas lights or if you do it after Halloween, you can find Halloween lights for like insanely cheap. And you put these through. Now when you put these in, you're gonna, they're gonna, you're gonna practically ruin the lights in a sense because you need to duct tape every inch or so. You cannot afford, you have to put these in the corners. You do not want kids knocking them down as they crawl through the tunnel. Um, but you know, you need to put these up there securely. Uh, but when they're in there, it's really cool. You climb through and there's lights through the tunnels. It really adds to the atmosphere. You can do other things. I just found these. These are great. At the end of a tunnel, have two eyes that the kids can see from afar off. Uh, sometimes I'll find these little things. I can stick these in corners. This here is a, um, it's a little bit of a, a flashing light and you can find all kinds of strobe lights and effects. And then of course the ultimate thing, get a fog machine with some fog. I pump that into the maze and that works, but you have to be very sparing on how you use it. You would be surprised how little fog from a fog machine can blow up the maze and, and it can get in people's eyes. You have to be cautious on how you use it, but it really does add to the overall effect. One more important detail is when you actually run the thing, Make sure you provide these for people. Crawling through these mazes, for me, I'm a big guy. You can see I'm big, I'm six foot four. I, I, you know, I'm big and so I always make the maze. If I can crawl through it, then pretty much anybody can. But wow, does it hurt your knees. So you make sure you have these in or put down plush carpet. You're gonna be using these. So have some knee pads for people to use. Other than that, have fun. Putting the whole thing together is a blast. Make sure you have workers helping you. Teenagers can be useful, you have, but you'll have to watch them like a dog and be careful because you are using knives 
and drills to put this together. But I'm telling you, when you put one of these together, you will have a moment kids will never forget. My kids will never forget that their dad has made a box maze now for the past so many years. It is a ton of work. I am standing before you right now exhausted. And it's been almost 24 hours since we've run it. And it's been very tiring, but it's super fun. So. Anyway, I hope this helps people out there who might be thinking about making their own box maze. Let's now go with Melody. We'll finish this off. If this bores you, you can turn it off now. But if you want to see kind of what, you know, she said it was really fun to go through with one hand crawling through the maze. But this is what it looks like going through a box maze. <laughs>